Welcome everybody. This presentation is about proxy SQL and mirroring. Uh, so what we do, we do basically we do support, but we'll just skip here. Who am I? I'm Rene Cano, I'm the author of Proxy SQL, uh, founder of the same company. Um, my background is I'm a SQL DBA for quite a long time. So um, quick overview about what is Proxy SQL. How many of you are familiar with it or know it? Uh, great. How many of you are using it? Okay, great. Right. Okay, so basically, in a nutshell, what it is is a proxy that is protocol aware and that sits between the application and the backend, uh, the MySQL server. It gets requests from the application, it processes them, decides what to do with them, and then performs action based on internal, some internal logic that is all programmable. Okay, so there is a bunch of features that I'm not going to go on this presentation, but the most important features that we are going to discuss is about multiplexing. And the reason behind this is, uh, is to try to solve one specific problem that is quite common in MySQL. In MySQL server, when you have a lot of connection, a lot of client connection, performance tends to degrade very badly. Um, the higher the number of connection, like 1,000 connection or 10,000 for connection, performance drops drastically. Um, here we have a graphs about uh, one specific use case in which replication was lagging and the only reason why replication was lagging was because there were too many connections to that server. Those connections were absolutely idle. They were not processing any request. The only thread that was running and doing some work on this server was replication and replication was just lagging. As soon as they killed all the of the idle connection, replication was able to catch up. And they identified this one uh, because they had two different servers with same specs. One with connection connected to, to the server, one without, the, and the one without connection was not lagging. So the only reason why one of the two slaves was lagging was because it has tens of thousands of connection. So um, quick overview of what are the various trading models that this can apply on any sort of software. Uh, so you can have either one thread per connection, or in some other system you can have even one process per connection, like in Postgres, or you have some thread pool. Pros and cons of both of them. Uh, well, um, the pros of uh, one thread per connection is that it's easy to develop, because you know the, every, every thread is just handling one connection. On the other hand, um, one of the problems is this blocking I.O. So that, that specific thread has to handle um, all, the connect, all the specific connection and nothing else. On the other hand, if you are using thread pool, it is way more difficult to implement because you have one single thread that has to manage multiple connection, but at the same time it's way more scalable because you don't have so many connection. Sorry, you don't have so many threads. So uh, MySQL, by default, it has one uh, thread per connection, and of course this has uh, some cost. Uh, the cost, again, is not specific to MySQL, but any application that uses this model of having one thread per connection. Um, basically, in short, you have a lot uh, of software thread, while the number of physical thread that are in the CPU are way less. So you have a lot of context switch, because the CPU every time has to switch from one software thread to another one. The number of registry it has to do all the context switching. And uh, you, know, you have mutex and contention between all those threads. And at the same time, the CPU cache most of the time is absolutely useless because all the context has been moved in and out from the CPU cache. And for the same reason, you have to access memory. So access to memory is way more expensive than accessing the uh, cache in the CPU. Um, so what about uh, implementation of pool, uh, of thread pool? So normally what you have is one thread that is accepting all the connection, and then these threads normally passing the connection to, to a set of threads pool that is uh, that they want processing the request. Um, in MySQL, the, this is not the default, but if you're using MySQL Enterprise, you have a thread pool. Um, MariaDB and then Percona implemented their own version of thread pool. The way it works is that um, all the new connections are being accepted by one listener, and then this listener is passing the connection to a thread pool. And that specific thread pool is the one that is going to handle the connection until the connection disconnect. And of course, because of, using, of the use of the thread pool, performance gets a lot better if you're using this. Great. 
Uh, what about in proxy SQL? Implementation of thread pool in proxy SQL is uh, slightly different. Uh, instead of having one listener, what we have is that all the threads in proxy SQL, they are all listening on the same port. Um, so one of the threads is the one that is going to get the connection and it will be handling the connection until the client disconnect. So it has some pros that basically uh, there is no context switching between the thread because all the information are always stays locally to the specific thread. Um, of course, it has also some cons because it can be happen that the threads are unbalanced, but this is a quite uh, rare case. Okay, so we have proxy SQL that has his own thread pool. Does this solve the problem of my SQL having a lot of connection? Uh, in reality, this by itself does not solve the problem. The reason why it doesn't solve the problem is that, of course, having proxy SQL uh, his own thread pool, it, it improves the performance of the proxy, but it does not solve the problem that uh, uh, you might have still a lot of connection to the, to the base server. Um, the reason being is that um, a lot of proxies, uh, if they are layer 4 proxy, but also layer 7 proxy, what they normally do is that for every client connection, they create one backend connection. So there is a one-to-one -one mapping. And of course, this of course does not scale because if you have tens of thousands of connections on the proxy SQL, you will have tens of thousands of connections to the database server. So uh, proxy SQL has uh, his own different implementation. What it does is that it has its own connection pool and uh, when a connection is being used after it executes a query, normally this connection goes back immediately to the connection pool, assuming that the connection is safe to be shared. Um, when a connection is safe to be shared, it means that there is no transaction running in the connection, there are no temporary table, there are no user-defined variable, etc., etc. So there are a certain number of criteria that define whatever the connection is safe to be shared or not. And if it is safe, just be, go back to, to the connection pool so the next client request can be, you, can be executed in that specific client connection. And, uh, well, so basically what we can have is that we can have thousands of uh, front-end connections that go funneled into very few back-end connections. So basically this is how proxy SQL performs multiplexing. So again, you can define the number of backend connection and the number of frontend connection can be extremely, extremely higher. Um, of course, there are certain criteria that automatically disable multiplexing. They are listed here. Like for example, if there is an active transaction, the connection cannot be shared until the transaction is completed. Or if you, for example, if there is some table lock, so if you have executed a lock table or flush table with read lock and that specific connection, that connection cannot be shared again until unlock table is executed. Uh, same thing happened with get lock. If you execute get lock, that connection cannot be shared anymore. Surprisingly, there are still a lot of applications that use it. Um, other criteria for disabling bing log is that if you execute set SQL log, um, SQL log being equal to zero, after you execute this, of course, that connection cannot be shared anymore because uh, otherwise this means that other connection will have binary log disabled. And of course, this is not something that you would desire. And uh, multiplexing is automatically re-enabled when you issue a set SQL log being equal one. So as soon as you re-enable it, the multiplexing is automatically uh, re-enabled it. Um, another reason why multiplexing is disabled is when you execute create temporary table or if you use SQL calc found rows or prepare. Um, prepare is the text protocol version of the prepare statement. <laughs> other reason, um, there are a lot of session variables that when they are enabled, uh, proxy SQL automatically disable multiplexing. Here I listed some of them, like set unique check uh, or set auto increment increment uh, foreign key check and so on. If the client execute one of those, um, <coughs> multiplexing is automatically disabled. Now, by default, it's also disable multiplexing for every query that has the app that is normally used for user variable or session variable. And um, uh, no matter if you are setting it or if you are reading it. And this, of course, can be problematic if uh, you are using some ORM or some uh, uh, JDBC driver that is actually, it, it wants to read all the session variables. So it performs some SAG statement in which specify this at. And so for those specific query, you are also able to create rules that automatically 
uh, re-enable multiplexing if there are such queries. Okay, questions so far? Good. Okay. Uh, one important thing to remember is that multiplexing does not automatically disable routing. Those are two different concepts. So you can have uh, multiplexing to be disabled on a specific connection, but still you can say you can have the client that send traffic into multiple connections. So one connection to the writer and one connection to the reader, or if you have sharding, um, you can have uh, one connection to one shard and another connection to another shard, and traffic is being load balanced based on certain criteria. Now, let's show some example of how it actually proxy SQL uh, help with uh, um, improving performance using multiplexing. Um, what will follow is some example of performance improvement that we got at Shopify, um, that they are using uh, uh, proxy SQL on all their infrastructure. So uh, those are initial testing they were doing. Uh, so basically, those are benchmark. They were running the same traffic uh, directly on MySQL and through proxy SQL. So you can easily see the difference. I don't know if you can see the numbers, but here we are close to 15,000, while here we are barely around 700. So the number of connection was 5% of the original. So they drastically reduced the number of connection. And during the same uh, benchmark, they notice um, that basically the number of threads running, uh, this with MySQL and this with proxy SQL. So thread running with, uh, with MySQL was spiking up to, to 100, while when they were doing, when they were using proxy SQL, the number of thread running was spiking up to 25. This was the maximum. Uh, thread inside in ODB uh, before they had 80, while with proxy SQL they have some few spike to 15. And more interesting is that the queue, uh, the thread in the InnoDB queue with uh, straight connecting to MySQL was again spiked to 100, while with proxy SQL it was flat to zero. Next. Uh, so those are other graph, graphs of uh, some benchmark. Um, let's start from down actually. So here MySQL traffic, here traffic passing through proxy SQL. The number of QPS is the same. Actually, with proxy SQL is slightly higher. So in proxy SQL, they were having more throughput. And uh, the number of uh, the execution query time of the query before was around 25,000, while when they passed to proxy SQL was 6,000. So the execution time of the query uh, was less when passing through proxy SQL. Um, proxy SQL was not filtering any traffic, was not caching anything. It was just ordering the execution of the query before, it, before sending them to the server. So it was basically reducing the number of connection to the server. Um, it also, the response time was drastically reduced. Here before the response time was averaging at around 1,000. I think this would be millisecond. And when they switched to proxy SQL, uh, it was around 0 0.3 or 0 0.4. So huge performance improvement. Again, uh, those are other graphs. Those are, this is actually production, production traffic. Um, so before, when they're connected to MySQL and when they switch to proxy SQL. So it passed from around 15,000 connection to, I don't know, probably they had 300 or something like this. Uh, thread running in MySQL, again, um, before they were having around 20, spike up to 35. When they switched to proxy SQL, the number of thread running was around 80 around eight, less than 10 for sure. And again, they got huge impro performance improvement in the total query execution time that passed from an average of 10,000 up to 20,000 down to I think less than four, something like this. So huge performance improvement. Uh, this is another graphs about some spike traffic. Um, so when they had those spike traffic with MySQL, the number of thread running spiked to 439, huge number. Um, and the number of QPS on MySQL was around 35,000 at this spike. When they switched to proxy SQL and they had a similar spike, uh, the number of QPS was around 70,000, 
so nearly double than the, this throughput. But proxy SQL uh, limited the number of connections to the database server, so it spiked, the thread running spiked to a bit higher than 100. Okay, um, one of the misconceptions uh, that uh, people uh, normally do when configuring proxy SQL is that uh, they, they configure the number of backend connections to be as high as the number of client connections. So if, the if they expect the client to open 1,000 connections, they configure that the proxy SQL to open up to 1,000 connections to the database server. In reality, this is something that you should not do. You should always try to configure proxy SQL to open way less connection to the database server. And uh, what happens if all the client execute some query at the same time, and if you have 100 client and you don't have enough uh, backend connection. What happens is that proxy SQL will internally sort the, those query in, based on the um, start time and um, will basically queue them internally and execute them serialized, so based on the number of connections that are open. And as I was showing in the previous slide, this actually improved performance. And uh, this is even more easy to understand on the next slide. Um, so basically this was a benchmark done uh, in 2016, so almost three years ago, uh, done by Percona. So this is some read-write workload using MySQL 5.7 and um, Percona server 5.7 with Threadpool and proxy SQL limiting the number of backend connections to 200. At low number of connection, the performance of both uh, MySQL server and uh, Percona server were higher than proxy SQL, and that's expected because proxy SQL has, has to analyze all the traffic before executing it. But then as the number of connections increased uh, at around, uh, know, at around 300 or something like this, no, around 200, the, the, the performance with MySQL server dropped drastically. The performance with Percona server uh, dropped as well, uh, but because they had thread pool enabled, it didn't drop so much. When I said proxy SQL was tapping the number of connections to the database server to 200, and performance kept stable no matter how many new con how many connections were on proxy SQL. So of course, if here we were adding more connection again, the performance in proxy SQL was going to be quite linear, while MySQL and Percona were somehow dropping. Question? Yes. Uh, you were talking about variables and session multiplexing. Yes. I used a user set variable to the add in a read write script, and it was only replicated to the write master and not to the second script. We have to duplicate the statement. Does it do that by now? Okay. Um, it doesn't duplicate, so it will only execute it to the to the to the writer, to the master, depending on according to the query rules you have configured. And of course, if you are executing a select statement, the select statement has to be executed on the same connection. Proxy SQL does not guarantee this. It really depends how you configure uh, your query rules. This is why I normally saying do not send all the select to the reader because this is wrong, because you, you, your example is a very clear example of when you should not send all the select to the, to the reader. And actually what you said, uh, what you ask is uh, basically, I'm highlighting this here, that multiplexing does not disable routing. So you can still have different type of routing. So like the, the write uh, statement goes to the master and the select statement goes to the slave. And if you are sending an act to the master, you should not send the select to the slave because it is this wrong. You should send it as well to the master. Yeah, but I wanted to have the performance of the read. Yes, but this is why what I normally recommend is that you identify which are the select that are safe to be sent to the slave. You don't send all the select to the slave. But I can't use the variable because we have to figure out. Yes, I mean, uh, you need to understand. Yeah. Sir? Repeat the question. Oh, yes. So uh, the question is about um, what happens if you have a query that has succession variables, so specify an at, and uh, it is a DML statement that goes on the writer, and then the select statement. Um, you have configured the proxy SQL to send the select statement to the reader. If you're sending the select statement that use the same session variables to the reader, the reader won't have that session 
variables because you haven't executed the ML there. Um, so what I'm suggesting is that you don't send all the select to the reader, but you only send to the reader uh, the select statements that are okay to be sent to the reader. So you, you order in proxy SQL, you check uh, from start my SQL query digest which are the query that are safe to be sent to the reader, and you only send those instead of everything. Yes? The query kind of, uh, Shopify example, were those uh, established connections? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes, so the question was if uh, here, um, the, the, the time, not, not this one, actually this one. So the query time in uh, those graphs, th they were about established connection or uh, they were counting also the time to establish the connection. Uh, those are about established connection. So there is, uh, so in those graphs, you don't even see the benefit of having proxy SQL and its own connection pool because those, those were already persistent connection. Any other question? Thanks.